In addition to the traditional large houses for pilgrims in the Holy Land, a new one has recently been added. It is the House of the Pilgrims of Magdala on the western shore of Lake Tiberias. Its opening was celebrated with a great feast. You can find a touch of Scottish atmosphere in Jerusalem. The Scottish Church of St Andrew opened its doors on the occasion of the Feast of the Patron Saint. At the School of the Custody of the Holy Land, children, local Christians and religious authorities gathered for a special moment, the lighting of the Christmas tree overlooking the Holy City. In Jerusalem, chefs at Notre Dame College reveal the secrets of local dishes that link social traditions and religious festivals. The shrines of the Holy Land are welcoming thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. There are many forms of pilgrimage with the most varied types of groups and realities. In addition to the traditional large houses for pilgrims in the Holy Land, a new one has recently been added. It is the house of the Pilgrims of Magdala, 160 double rooms near an archaeological park visited every day by more than 1,500 people on the western shore of Lake Tiberias. A truly majestic complex managed by the Legionaries of Christ, built in the place where Maria di Magdala was born and lived. The opening of the complex was celebrated with a big party. I think it's the first of this millennium. It is located in Magdala, so in a place that has a lot to do with women, with mothers, with grandmothers, with all the women in the world. I want to thank all the generous people who worked as volunteers, as benefactors, as artists. Among them, Maria Fernandez Ortiz, who gave the overall artistic imprint of the structure. La idea eh, ha sido crear un, un concepto urbanístico aquí en el nuevo, eh, eh, la nueva casa de peregrino. The idea was to create an urban concept in the new house for pilgrims. That's why I designed this fountain, which is called Source of Living Water. The focus is on the transparency of the water. We have the water that comes from below, from the subsoil. The work culminates in the mosaic that represents Galilee. It was created with almost one and a half million tiles. Small, natural stones, each with its own color from different countries and continents. The idea and the culmination of this urban concept are to invite pilgrims, tourists, and all those who come here to discover the land of Jesus. But also what was before Jesus. In short, an idea of transparency towards the history of Judaism and Christianity. <laughs> pero también lo que había antes de Jesús, que es el, la transparencia hacia la idea, hacia la vida, digamos, la historia del judaísmo y el cristianismo. On the part of the local church, but not only, the commitment to welcoming pilgrims to the Holy Land, whose number continues to grow, is increasingly important. Cuando uno viene per prima volta a conocer questi posti, è sempre una emozione molto grande. Coming to know these places for the first time is always a very big emotion. This complex has everything necessary for days of spiritual retreat, of meditation. These places are very important for the church and they have been important since the time of St. Francis. Now we have a new and very important place. This is where the joy of this day comes from. This is a sign that we are not anchored in the past in what has always been done. We are open to new forms to welcome pilgrimages. I hope that all those who come here to Magdala will be able to meet, together with the beautiful stones, the witness of the risen Christ. You can find a touch of Scottish atmosphere in the Holy City. The Scottish Church of St Andrews opened its doors on the occasion of the Feast of the Patron Saint of Scotland. There are not many references 
to St. Andrews in the New Testament. Um, he was a humble fisherman, the brother of Simon Peter, who grew up in the Galilee. And he was later a missionary um, throughout Greece, and some people say um, into what is now Ukraine. This is a Presbyterian church, born from the reform of 1560 by John Knox. The Scottish church has been present in the Holy Land since the early 1900s, when the Scottish population increased significantly during the British mandate. This church was um, built in 1929 um, at a very different time to where we are today. Um, and in 1917, General Allenby um, enters Jerusalem um, and David, um, General Allenby um, laid the first stone here at this church. And so the church was built to commemorate the soldiers who had fallen in the First World War um, Palestinian campaigns across um, Palestine. In the small church under the burning bush in the shape of a cross in memory of Pentecost, there were songs and prayers in different languages during the liturgical service. trying to use our presence here really as, as, as a bridge into different communities. Um, what we do feels like a very small drop in a very big ocean. We hope that in some small way it is contributing towards uh, a just peace and a future um, where all of those who are living here um, are treated with the same dignity, respect um, and human rights um, as we're all made in the, in the image of God. Today, the small congregation of St. Andrews offers hospitality to pilgrims in Jerusalem, as well as in Galilee, on Lake Tiberias. They also provide education in their own school in Jaffa, in Tel Aviv. The joy of Christmas has taken over the Terra Sancta school in Jerusalem. Children, youth and adults gathered for a special moment, waiting for the tree to light up. The tree is mounted in the upper part of the school of the custody of the Holy Land with a view of the city. First of all, a big party. We started last year and this is the second year we have this tree lighting party, the Tree of Jerusalem. You can see the whole city and also the school, the most important in Jerusalem, the school of the Holy Land. In the schoolyard, typical food and musical performances. The religious authorities also took part in the event. A Christmas gift for the pupils and also for the families. Christmas in the Holy Land is the best. And this, this semester is the best in the year, especially in Christmas. We have lights, we have the tree, and children are happy all, all together. We can, they can play, they can buy things, as you see. We are happy, especially in this time. Today there's the lighting of the tree, like every year. As you can see, they are all gathered to celebrate Christmas, and we are very happy. We feel like a family. We live in the same city, we love each other, and we hope that next year will be a very good year for all of us. Finally comes the long-awaited moment. A light show leaves everyone enchanted. Have you ever tasted traditional dishes associated with a Christian presence in the Holy Land? I was fortunate to taste some of the most delicious dishes prepared by chefs from different Christian denominations in the kitchen of Notre Dame College in Jerusalem.
The Sabel Centre launched this project in November to preserve the traditional local cuisine and the stories about its historical origins. During the period in which the Syriac and Armenian massacres happened, there was not enough food available for the families. However, in return, the products of their land, like lentil, onion, parsley and lemon, were available. Thus, they were able to prepare special dishes from these products, especially during the period of Lent. They took advantage of what was within their reach to make special dishes, which became associated with religious feasts. This plate is kital. We prepare it on the Feast of Ascension. When we boil the lentil in water, the grains go up in a way that resembles Christ's ascension into heaven. These are packs made of lentil that we prepare during the Lent period, and the Syriacs call it balua. Today I've prepared a pudding, which also symbolizes Christ's ascension into heaven for Catholics, because after his torments on earth, Jesus Christ ascended to heaven with his white garment. Thus, this pudding is associated with this feast. Fifteen different plates associate traditional food and religious events. I'm Palestinian from Armenian origin. My roots go back 350 years. My grandparents came here in 1700 and settled in Jerusalem. Armenians were among the first Christians since 301 AD. We are still here despite the massacres committed by the Turks in 1915. Yes, there's an Armenian state and an Armenian flag, but my roots are here. Even plants and traditional dishes are part of their cultural heritage and prove the roots of people in their land. We have a rich cuisine and rich cultural heritage that we should revive, so they do not disappear. I hope that these dishes, which represent traditional Palestinian food, will be preserved because they are linked to our customs, beliefs and identity. The shrines of the Holy Land are welcoming thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They carry with them the willingness to take long walks and also the patience to face the queues. This makes the pilgrimage more challenging. We are happy to see so many Christians coming from all over the world, mainly from Asia. It is a great joy because it was already a tradition having people from Latin America Europe and also from the United States. There are a few small difficulties, the queue, but they are part of a pilgrimage, small sacrifices, but the joy is greater. I pray that many other people will be able to visit the holy places and learn more about the saint of the earth. This is the fourth time I have come to the Holy Land and I always find something new. It is a wonderful experience. The people are moved, and I am also moved. To be in the places where Jesus truly passed through touches our hearts deeply. Pilgrims from all over the world come here because the Holy Land is the root, the source of our faith. God has truly loved us in history with the incarnation of the Word, with Jesus who healed and saved us with his saving Word. And here, with the mystery of redemption, with his death and resurrection, he saved and freed us. To come to the source of faith is to renew this faith in the Lord Jesus. We have the grace to see many forms of pilgrimage with the most varied types of groups and realities. We also followed the group of priests from the Archdiocese of Rio de Janeiro with Bishop Paolo Alves Romao, who accompanied them during their retreat in the Holy Land. On the afternoon of the 19th of November, they made their solemn entrance into the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. The priests renew their faith because they can repeat the gestures of Jesus. Jesus was recognized in breaking the bread at Emmaus. He was recognized at the third apparition 
told in the Gospel of St. John, in roasting the fish and preparing the bread for the disciples. And here, he was recognized by Magdalene with the call Mary. She recognized him by his voice. It is the gestures of Jesus that can be renewed. Early in the morning, as required by the status quo, the priests returned for the celebration of Mass with the community of the Holy Sepulchre at 6.30 in the morning. Certainly a special experience. Every moment of the visit to the Holy Places is always a moment of great emotion. I come for the first time in this retreat with the clergy of the Archdiocese from Rio de Janeiro. I am the bishop who accompanies this group of priests who also represents the Cardinal of Rio de Janeiro, Monsignor Orani Tempesta. Brother Bruno was our guide during the retreat. In every holy place he helped us to understand the richness of the mystery of the Lord's presence. This is the place where he dies and resurrects, and it is the source of the hope of our life. Today in particular, celebrating Mass inside the empty tomb was a great emotion. As was touching and seeing the mystery of the redemption of the Lord dying on the cross and rising again which is the source of hope, joy and eternal life. This is a unique experience that we will safely take to Rio de Janeiro, me and all the other priests, as we are transformed by the presence of the Lord in our lives. Que você tá olhando, hein, Bequinha? <risos>